Well, hi, it's Debbie from Nature's Caress again. I'm back already. Um, today I'm going to make some cookies and cream bath truffles, which I find they're my most luxurious product that I love the most. Um, they're really lovely in a foot spa or a bath if you want to get in a bath. Um, a lot of my customers don't use the bath, but they're beautiful in just a bowl of hot water. You only need to put one in um, and it's full of shea and cocoa butter and clay and it just gives a fizz and it's just so beautiful for your tired feet after a day on them. Anyway, I'm going to make them um, with you today. So this is what they look like. They actually have um, I call them cookies and cream because they're like a, I do two halves in a little round mould and then I put the actual um, uh, whipped soap base in the middle and a bit on the top and then I can either put a melt and pour soap on the top. But I'm going to um, make some truffle tops today so that it will be completely um, a bath truffle. Um, so it will all dissolve in the bath and be really scrumptious. So um, the recipe will be supplied, the whole recipe, so come along with me. Okie dokie, I'm back now. Now, um, the mixture is pretty simple. It's really a, an easy recipe. So this particular one, um, I'm just doing a small batch to see how they work out. So I've got 150 grams of soda bicarb and 75 of citric acid in here and 10 grams of white clay. I've sifted that and mixed that thoroughly. Then I've heated up some shea butter in here. Um, so I've got 60 grams of that. I'm not going to put a fragrance in it because um, I can interchange them then and I'm not stuck with the, the, with the tops all being having to be the same fragrance. I'm going to use some um, Carbazole Neon to make them purple, the top. So as I say, I'm only doing a small batch so um, I can make more if they turn out good. So I'll just add a little bit um, of Neon to this because I don't need them super bright. And I'll give that a good old mix up. That one. So the secret is also when you make truffles is not to um, have the shea butter really, really hot, you know. Um, it's better if it's just melted, of course, but not boiling hot because i found when I've made truffles in the past, um, I get, um, if it's really hot, it makes them crumbly and they don't set for some reason. Um, so this has got shea butter and some poly 80 in here as well to stop the colour sticking to the bath um, and help disperse the colour. Um, so there we go, that's pretty good. Um, I guess you could use water soluble dyes too, I suppose, as long as you activate it first with a little tiny bit of water before you put it in the oil. Um, but that's looking okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll mix that in there now and give it a good stir around. And I'm just going to put them into some little heart modes as I said in the intro um, because I'm going to give it a go just with the truffles this time. Um, I think that's good enough. Give it a good mix in. And then I'll just push them into the heart moulds. Um, as I said, I've been experimenting a little bit with this at the moment, so I might need a little bit more shea bar. But I'll give it a go. It's looking okay. I can actually force them into the mould, I think. Um, but they're better if they're more liquid because then they'll actually pour and then they'll set really nicely. So what I'm going to do is just stop the video and add a little bit more shea butter. Okay, I'm back with um, another 30 grams of shea butter. So I'm going to see if that'll be enough now because as I said, it needs to be liquid to work really well. So I'll tip that in. Um, I'm, as I say, I'm tweaking this because I've never made the actual little things on the top, the in, like truffle embeds. So... I've sort of tweaked the recipe a bit, but it definitely has to be a bit more. So this is looking more like it. Because then it's much easier if you can just pour it in, like it's not super liquidy, but you can pour it into the mould and then it, you know, obviously it's like so you can, um, it will hold its shape. And, and I think this will be beautiful. As I say, they're just so yummy in the water when you soak your feet. It's worth trying them just for yourself um, if you can get hold of the ingredients. Okay, put that over there and I'll start pouring them in here. I should have enough. If not, I've got another mould there. Trusty 
cake spatula that I use for everything. I'll get them in each one. And what I do now is after they've I've filled them up, I'll pop them in the fridge for about 20 minutes and then they'll be rock hard um, and I can get them out and I think they're going to work out good. Me thinking, this is great. So, yeah, um, I've made normal bath truffles just like this before um, with cocoa and shea butter for many years. Um, but I just, it's just a bit of a variation to that, something a bit different. And as I say, with the whip soap, um, the whip soap base in the middle, it sort of gives that extra bit of luxury as well. It's just because that's lovely, that whip soap, if you've tried that before. Um, I don't just sell it on its own, but I use it as a base for my um, sugar scrubs. So I put that, all my sugar scrub mixture in with the oils as well. Um, yeah, so I'll just grab another mould. I haven't got enough room in that one. A little bit more in here. You need to be full. Let's put that one. I don't want to waste any because it's so precious. It doesn't matter as long as it's the shape looks nice, but that'll be the back side of it, so it's not so important. Okay, move that out of the way and put the rest in here. Okay, I'll finish doing this and I'll bring you back for part two. See you soon. Okie doke, um, up to part two of the cookies and cream bath truffles. Now I have mixed up, I don't want to bore you with mixing the ingredients, so I've done enough for about um, 18 of these little cookie thingies. Um, they're just silicon cookie moulds that I bought just from the shops or, or somewhere and in here I have got my bicarb, my citric acid, my clay. In here I've got shea and cocoa butter and poly sorbate and I just have to mix in and my fragrance oil's gone in. I'm using Frangi Penny today. Um, it smells so delicious. I get it from Aroma in Australia. Um, it does contain vanillin, so I can't use it in my soap. So I use it for bath bombs and things like this where it doesn't mix with the lye and cause a problem. And I'm going to do it in a lemon um, glacier neon today. So I'll add a little bit of that into here, just like I did before. So it's similar, but this one's got um, cocoa butter in it as well. So we'll mix him in. I just, just did it yellow because I thought, why not? I like yellow. Yellow and purple look nice together. The tops will be the purple little parts and the white in between, as I said before. And the neons are a bit harder to mix in, so I'm, what I'm going to do is just do a bit of a thingy jiggy with this. My little blender, which is good for little batches of things. And that is perfect. So again, it's just like the other one. We mix this in with the citric acid and I pour them into here. And in the fridge they go to set for half an hour or so. Um, and then I can pop them out and um, show you how I do the actual whip soap in the middle and on the top. So let's get back in here. I'll just get my spatula, get all this out of here. Use every little bit of it. Pour it into here. As I say, it's really, it's simple. It's, it's really simple. It's just mixing your ingredients together and the effect that you get is just super amazing. And obviously you can fragrance it with anything you like. If you're more into essential oils, use them. Just make sure you use the correct amount um, because they're just as, um, can be just as bad on your skin if you overdo it there's a percentage rate that you're only supposed to do 
wash on products 5% maximum but again it, it's different with um, essential oils sometimes you've got to use less you have to look into that I teach soap making as well and um, I've got charts and things that I give my ladies or men that come along and want to learn about it because essential oils are different to fragrance oils on the site where you buy the fragrance oil they'll tell you what um, amount you can use for different um, different purposes if it's leave on it's obviously one percent if it's washed off it can be up to five but every site has a different um, percentage because some fragrance oils you can't use at four five percent they might only be three so you need to be aware of all that when you do this but this one's safe this one i checked it out so what i'm going to do now is i'll just push them into the molds and again they'll go into the fridge so i just they don't have to be um like runny like the other ones because i don't use quite as much of the um, shea butter and the cocoa butter as in the truffle part in the thing on the top so this is just still lovely I use quite a lot there's a lot um, goes into this still about 80 grams of butters so um, so yeah that's all we have to do for this and then they come out dreamy and um, I'll just uh, keep doing these as I said this batch I usually get about 18 of these so that makes nine of the cookies and cream so I'll keep doing this and um, I won't bore you with it and I'll bring you back when I get to the next stage see you then okie dokie I'm back with all the little things that I did earlier so these are the the actual bases of the cookies and the tops of course they're both identical so they've set hard in the fridge the um, hearts have set hard as well but I found they were going to be too big sitting on the top so I've cut them down the centre so they're just half um, I think that'll sit better otherwise they're just a bit too big and look a bit ugly so they're all ready to go now I've got my whip soap base that I make myself from scratch um, yep yeah, I make that as well but you can buy whip soap at m most of the soaping places so you don't have to make your own um, so you just you buy it and it's already made up like this this is just clear melt and pour now I tried it the first time I did this I just used the whip soap base and it just stays too sticky it never sets um, and that's no good you know trying to sell it like that because they fall apart and all sorts of things happen so what I've done is I've mixed some melt and pour and that worked out really well so it's just equal parts in this actual recipe because I've only got six actual um, little cookies to do um, I just did 40 grams of each so it obviously depends on if you're making a big batch or whatever but it's equal parts one to one of the melt and pour and the whip soap base so I just put it in in with it um, you know just melt it till it's obviously melt you know heat it till it's melted you don't want to overdo that either um, and then I just mix it together and then I mix it with the mixer so that you actually get like whipped cream like little peaks so um, I'll do that now now I just use one of the actual beaters when I do it because it's such a small recipe it'd just be left all on the beaters and hardly worth doing it so that's all I'm going to do with this and you just whip it till you sort of just get peaky things like whipped cream but only a bit thicker eject that so that's all um, don't overdo it again it'll just go too hard because the melt and pour will obviously go hard and you won't be able to pipe it so it's just pretty good like this and then it will set more obviously on your little cookies um, so yeah I'm just going to pop that into a piping bag and pop that in the middle and on the top and sit my little what's your name McCall it's in there the bag's a bit of an overkill, but it doesn't matter. I'll just put it in there. 
I use these little disposable ones for small stuff like this because the other big ones are good for piping on your soaps but you can get it out of this better as well okay so that should be plenty of mixture for what I'm doing didn't work out quite as much as last time I've got 18 out of it I must have been too heavy handed I must have filled it up less last time which is probably a better idea because they're quite thick but you get that so there we go off I go piping bring you over so I'll sit that on top like that and I'll put a little bit on the top and I'll put my heart on top of that just to hold it so that's what that that's how that works put that on there you don't need squillions but you want it to sort of come out so it looks a bit good they are so lovely to soak your feet in them and I know this is going a bit over the top I make just the normal plain truffles as well and I can sell them a bit cheaper because it's not got all the other whip soap in it but um, I don't know I just love these the whip soap makes it really nice I thought, what am I doing the whip soap makes it really nice because it's um, um that's lovely as well, isn't it? When you have that, if you've ever had whip soap, that's beautiful. Um, I don't tend to make it, I don't, I don't tend to sell it. I use it in my sugar scrubs and, um, and that's beautiful in that because you've got the foamy sort of base as well as the sugary scrub thing happening. So it's really beautiful. And I'll push that out so it looks good. And that one doesn't look that crash up, but it's okay. I'll stand him up like that. So that's the finished product. And as I say, that's in wild frangy penny, which smells really lovely if you like frangy penny. I'm going to use this up for myself. And so um, I'll put this on here now. And that one's going to be mine. So there we go. That's all there is to it and as I said I'll put the recipe in the description box and you can make your own whatever size you want. See you next time.